Welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of April Fool's Day, 19, 2019. <laughs> I almost said 19. <laughs> um, okay. Tonight we're going to discuss um, not only the business matrix that we've been working hard on, um, but also some of the um, ideas for streamlining the permitting process. And really that starts with educating ourselves about the permitting process. <laughs> and what the laws are in Massachusetts and, and so on. And then um, we have previously done some brainstorming about encouraging biotechnology uses, and I thought we could take that up again and, and, um, and discuss where we can take it from here. And then, um, and then just approving the minutes. Um, I also sent the work plan um, to you midweek or something like that, so just to make sure everybody had that. And, um, and I think if, if we have time tonight, we can discuss that more as well. Um, so um, Ron brought up to me separately about the uh, public hearing at the planning board last week and the specifically citizens' petitions around growth and, and um, phasing growth in town. And that's specific to residential uses, of course. And, um, and I just wanted to see, I, don't, I think some of you were able to make it to the public hearing, but if anyone had any questions or comments or ideas or anything like that, thoughts on it in the process, that would be great to hear. No? No, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just, oh no, I don't have anything. Oh. <laughs> just wanted well, I, to, yeah, go ahead. I really appreciated Muriel starting out the citizen petition discussion by saying, we have a process in place that says, you know, we have zoning laws in place, we have a zoning advisory council, we have all of these things in place, and that's really an appropriate place to be addressing these things. And I thought that was very appropriate. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not sure who drives that process. Is, is, it, is it up to the planning board to come to us and say, we want you to, to look at these things, or is it up for us to pick up the mantle and say, you know, as a zoning advisory group, you know, we think it's appropriate to do some studies and, and find some, come up with some alternatives. Again, I, I, I think I think that's a good question because it's like uh, technically we're part of we're a subcommittee essentially of the planning board, right? So, so that is that's important, I think. Yeah. And to, to recognize that that they should dictate what our focus is in general, but it's not like they are going to um, give us everything we're going to do. You know, so sometimes that comes directly from the public. One thing that I'd like to see more of is um, members of the public coming forward with, instead of just a brief idea or this is a problem, but also potentially suggesting um, their solutions to it, including, you know, if they have any draft wording suggestions and things like that. So um, that would be great if, they, if that would happen. Go ahead, Rhea. Um, Mary, I, I don't know. I've been on these boards and committees for a few years now, and what I see is that a lot of the decisions on zoning have been driven by developers who have come before the boards and committees in the town and have suggested, I'd like to do this with this property. And then they sort of force everything to go along that versus when we've tried to, and this has been an ongoing process, when we've tried to commit to zoning um, without a developer pushing it, there's a lot of resistance. And I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. It's, um, but the, the major uh, imbalance between residential and commercial right now is due to the, you know, the Western nurseries. I mean, that's the biggest chunk right there, um, which is, you know, we all knew that that was going to come along. I don't really think that we understood the full impact of that project, even with the researcher, the, the um, specialist that did all the numbers. And oftentimes that is the case. Oftentimes, when you know, towns you know do a build, you know a big project like that, they can't see the full impact of it. Mm -hmm. So, when we talk about some of these residential projects, um, it, it is hard to say, "Hey, uh, stop for two years or one year or whatever," you know, um, because 
the property owners who own the property tend to be over 50 years old. They want to, you know, see the money out of their property so they can retire and all of that. And it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a balance. It's a difficult. I don't have a solution to it. I really don't. I don't think any town has a solution to it other than the fact that when we keep the zoning more agriculturally based and we have to reflect on zoning and have a lot more participation, that's when we get the feedback. Many of the towns that I work in have um, an automatic email system, which I would love Hopkinton to do, because it, what it does is it allows people to know when these meetings are happening. The calendar is automatic. I'm on several towns. I get emails from several towns for selectmen, planning board, zoning, you name it. and. So my inbox is constantly telling me who has a specific item that they're reviewing. Because of that, I know when I can show up for a meeting. Because otherwise, there's no way I could keep track of everything. And I think that a lot of people in this town feel a little excluded. I mean, we do have some level of advertising and whatever, but it's not as much as the way a lot of other towns are. And I don't know, Elaine, have we ever looked at that? kind of a system where it was an automatic email when you say you sign up for zoning and planning and you can, subscribe to that on the town website. You can get those emails constantly okay you get the agenda. so you get the agenda yeah. you get, mm -hmm. and you can get the minutes as well uh, I don't think there's not by email, no, I don't not think. By email. you can look them up in our document management system I get from my previous stint as a planning board member I get the full documentation for whatever now maybe that's not available to the public, but I do get it as a previous planning board member. I get the the agenda, the posted. agenda, the minutes. I pretty much get the whole so package. The, so for instance, the planning board does a meeting packet as to the board of select, right. and that's available to whoever subscribes. Other boards can. I don't know. We could subscribe because I I looked. I didn't see it. No, I've I've been getting it for years. You can so subscribe. I can subscribe to Hopkington. Interesting. But each board. You'll, Who knew? You'll get the agenda for every single committee we have in town. But can you pick and choose the ones you want to follow? Delete, delete. delete. <laughs> there, are, there are certain groups, for instance, you can subscribe to planning board. I, I do know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully people on TV know that that's a, that's a way to do it now because I, I didn't see it on our website to We're sign up. We're that people... We don't want to send out emails to people who don't want them. So people right, of course, of course, yeah. Of course. <coughs> the, the, the school system has one similar, obviously. And so, yeah, that makes sense. I, I will say finding minutes for me has been frustrating sometimes. Um, unless I'm clicking the wrong buttons, the they seem to be listed in a real mess. It'll go from 2005 for a bunch of entries and jump to 2017, and then you get to 1997 minutes. And then, and I don't know what's going on there, but... Eventually, you can usually find it, but it's not user friendly. The town has a vendor. Oh, so what's going on? Mm -hmm. I think we're in a in a unique position now that we've never been in before, and Zach, in the fact that we're now year round, so it gives us a lot more ability to to study things a little more in depth than you know the six months to try and get stuff to town meeting and just <coughs> looking at things in a cursory way and saying. Yep, this sounds really good, as opposed to actually taking the, the initiative and starting to look at something from square one and going through the process and saying this would be a good move for us. So hopefully, going forward, we'll use the full year format to, mm -hmm. to do better at that yeah. because yeah, we're supposed I, to plan, yeah, right? I, I haven't, I, I agree. I don't think Zach was set up in such a way to be able to delve into issues very deeply um, in the past because there just wasn't that continuity from year to year, so um, necessarily. So, so I, I have a quick question about the process. The two citizens petitions will still go forward, right, to the town's meeting agenda, or uh, will it be? Is it a? Is it pending decision or something? The the sponsor will um, decide whether or not oh. to put them forward. They are currently on the warrant. Um, or the holding place, whatever that. <laughs> and they, they be there. before, yeah, before the end of I think April, or yeah, I think it's the end of April. Um, she may make wording changes. Mm -hmm. She may um, withdraw one or both of them if she chooses to, um, and um, certainly can consult with town council to you know make sure the legalized wording of it is correct and that sort of thing. 
Um, so yeah, that's so. The, no, the reason why I asked mm -hmm. is, is there an expectation from Zach to do a little bit of what do what is our findings or something like that? Is yeah. there like is is there something that they are waiting for us or they can can they carry move on without that or? It <coughs> can go forward to town meeting this year. Okay. Whether or not we do anything. Okay. Um, we can um, certainly try to delve into more more research that's out there mm -hmm. to um, to help inform on the discussion at town meeting. Um, we can also take up any part of the discussion and continue it forward even past town meeting, okay. um, because you know there's there's certainly aspects of the growth and and the balance and and that sort of thing and making sure. Um, the schools, you know, are planning appropriately and so on, that, you know, whether or not these are approved or not at town meeting, I, you know, I think those discussions can go Yeah, on, they, they seem know. to be valid topics. <laughs> so I was like, we're not going to give up on them just right. because this particular article is not perfect or something like that. Correct. Right? Yes. yes. So there's no reason that can't be, you know, uh, the next year, okay. the, over the next year. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, okay, so why don't we start on the business matrix? Oh, you printed it out. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, 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 I couldn't follow it. <laughs> I know it's hard to it's hard to follow on a screen, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through these three summary s spreadsheets that. I did, and why, why you know why the, they're presented in various ways. As I said in my email, um, I needed to convert our high, medium, low to a five-point scale, with five five being high, low being one, and of course we used some zeros in the case of tax revenue for for certain nonprofits and so on because they were off the scale entirely. And then I could average it, um, and also. We all used a five-point scale, even though we were supposed to be using high, medium, low, because it's so hard for <laughs> people to, to pick just one of three. <laughs> and sometimes we use low, low slash medium or medium slash high, and that's fine. Um, it's just human nature. <laughs> so this particular scale does show visually um, all five rankings. So it's basically a, a spread of... Um, know where it falls within the the five point scale so that's uh, it unfortunately this couldn't come in color I couldn't figure out how to program my own exact <laughs> system so there's a uh, so there, there was a limitation on how effective this visual presentation was but I wanted to leave it as an option because it shows the five point scale rather than reducing it back to a three point scale okay um, these two items were the ones we did together, and that's why they're, well, almost all of them are, this, are the same. It could be that one or two people, like in that cell, daycare, job Overruled. fit, overruled. <laughs> <laughs> I found that when I was doing my version, I was like, no, that's not five. It shouldn't be five. I should put it. <laughs> so, so I definitely was disagreeing, <laughs> but, but I left it anyhow. Um, okay, and so so like I said, this is this has its limitations um, in terms of really being able to see see it easily. So summary number two is reduced to a um, three point scale because again that was some of the conditional formatting that was available um, <laughs> in in Excel. So, and what I did also is I made the resource use a negative scale. So five is, five is red in that case. Five is green in, in the contributions, okay? So it's reversed, okay? Does that make sense, mm -hmm. everybody? Okay, good. Okay, so visually it's a little bit easier to see um, and one thing you'll notice, there is a lot of yellow. There's a lot of yellow because, again, it's human nature not to go the highest or the lowest on any scale that we put things into. Um, but also, the fact of averaging our scores also tends to drive things toward the middle. It's just, just 
the way it happens. But, um, but we can certainly see some differences, and that's the good thing. You know? so, so certain things um, in, in this area, for instance, we're seeing you know, low job density, low fit perhaps, whereas uh, there's a group of things that are very, you know, we, we rate it all very highly for town image, quality of life, and so on. Um, hospital across the board was rated very highly, and um, that's, you know, and laboratory research centers across the board has been rated very highly by all of us. And so, um, and that wasn't unexpected necessarily, but, uh, but that's just interesting to see. So, um, some of the lower things, you know, car rental, self-storage, our favorite topic. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm surprised the granite core quarry did that well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think because it was right next to asphalt, <laughs> it's, it's better by comparison. <laughs> um, so, so that was, it's good to see. Now, when you look at the negatives, so red is the worst here. No, yeah, red is the worst. So if we rated it highly for, for, for resource use, red is the worst, okay? So riding stables were considered pretty good. <laughs> um, and the other things, good, you know, fairly low road use for, for doggy daycare, animal shelters, things like that. Makes sense. I did see us have a, a lot of differences in opinion on road use. So we were, many of us were interpreting it slightly differently, I think, and, and that's, that's okay. It's just, you know, again, that's just the way it is. Um, let's see here. So one thing that I'm gonna try in the next two weeks, bef well, actually, it's gonna be longer than that before our next meeting. Um, I'm gonna try graphing some of this and see if anything jumps out from graphing. And, but I encourage you guys to, study this for hours on end and <laughs> see yeah, what occurs. This version, right? I color. did. You have to, you have to go from tab to tab. Oh, yeah, tab. see the tabs at the bottom? Oh. Yeah. So some of us, you know, live on Excel in our work life and some of us don't. So <laughs> I understand that. Um, so I think the parking needs are a big differentiation between a lot of different um, businesses as well. Um, and then uh, I, I particularly, you know, manufacturing, there's our general impression is it's using a lot of resources, but I think it also depends on the type of manufacturing, the type of business it is, not necessarily just all manufacturing. And that's, you know, understandable. We can't um, have so many different versions of this. Um, the summary number three shows the ranges. So this was my, and this, I, I didn't do a conditional formatting, I just did um, um, by, by eyeball. <laughs> Anything in the blue shading had a fairly large range. So one to five, one to four, or two to five, that sort of thing, fairly large range. So that means that we were interpreting things differently, and that's okay, like I said, I just wanted to have this as additional data for you to look at and understand. Um, so as you can see, road use, traffic, that sort of thing was a lot of discrepancy. And, um, and I, when I was doing my own ratings on these, I was like, Okay, yeah, I could see that as a five. Wait a minute, no, but you know, on some days, no. <laughs> and so, um, so I could, I, I could definitely see how this would happen. Um, some other things, for instance, landscaping business, storage and staging. Now, so I think people could interpret that differently. Is it just where somebody's parking the trucks for landscaping, or is it someplace where, you know, they're doing um, more work on site? Um, for that type of business, and so that's why we have we have things across the board in terms of um, in terms of ratings. So, okay, so those are our summary sheets. I'm going to go back to summary two since I think this is probably the most useful one to look at, at least when we're looking at it in this format. 
Um, so, um, it seems that, again, not surprisingly, laboratories, research centers, we all consider pretty high value. They do have a tendency to use um, a lot of resources as well, or high road use, et cetera. Um, but, um, but they do give us a high job density and high skills, and so that's a good fit with our town in general, in our perception. Um, hospitals, clinics, and um, health services offices, to a lesser extent, but also, um, also we considered high value. Um, hospitals themselves, also very high resource usage. The health services, you know, medical dental offices, not so much. Um, so, um, I think uh, the health club, Recreational uses are considered, they can be a benefit to town image, quality of life, that sort of thing. There was an impression that museum and entertainment can drive revenue to other businesses, as well as hotels or inns, educational facilities, um, the hospitals, and, you know, and laboratory research centers as well, so some of those things were considered pretty high value from that perspective. Oh, sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, got it. <laughs> Back to normal now. And let's see, agriculture, even though we weren't rating agricultural zone, um, we did have this agricultural um, section on here. And that was considered high in terms of town image and quality of life. Um, as well as you know being relatively low on resource usage, but you know higher in the water in the sewer area. So, anything else that people wanted to comment on in terms of the ratings right now? Things that jump out at you. So just going by the visual impact of it, even though even though hospitals has more greens, health services seems to win out in the average because the resource use. Same way for museum, I see tax revenue is zero, but everything else seems to be on the green. Like, so I'm like, it's going to be a little bit of like just because it's it's not going to be straight winner, right? Right. Like yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the next steps for me is this part where we were doing our first impressions. Not everybody had a chance to do that or felt comfortable doing it. Um, I have not yet filled in all the Dover Amendment um, items and I haven't filled in what zones they're allowed in now. So I wanted to compare, but some of the blue shading was my impression, again, eyeballing it. <laughs> my impression of, oh, you know, we're relatively well in agreement on those, you know? So, so that's, what, that's what I was uh, starting to fill in. And then, um, oh, and, and by the way, I know that I was putting rural businesses RB instead of BR, so just be aware of that. <laughs> so it might, might be, if you're, if you're reading through this and you're like, what is that? Great, so I can just, yeah, send me that and I'll just cut and paste. Um, so, but this is interesting to see too, um, including the, the none, you know, recycling center, hazardous waste processing center. Um, I that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't either, but. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. But that, that was interesting. <laughs> and, and some other items too, asphalt plant, for instance. Oh, those are my little IVs. Oh yeah, this this one yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, which meant if if you want to put it somewhere, you need to put it in, in industrial B. But I think it should be on one of the outlying industrial Bs, not the big industrial. Right. B. And I started to realize that I was thinking of industrial B as the Elmwood Park area, and it's like the lower the the stuff below West Main Street, south of West Main Street, is industrial B also, isn't it? So, 
And, and so is off of Cedar Street. Yeah, so, so it got confusing, you're right, because parts of Industrial B, I, I wouldn't want a high traffic type of need in there, for instance, in Elmwood Park, but, um, but you know, some other uses in, in another part of Industrial B, yes, I would. I would consider that would be it's reasonable. It's to be anywhere. Right, yeah. So anyhow, yeah. Um, I, did, I did find it interesting going through the process that all the industrial B is zoned with the exact, you know, it's industrial B, so obviously it's got the same uses. But I don't see the same uses on the properties to me or, or the locations. They're different. Are very, very different. Very different to me. I agree. And it might be a good idea to bring out the map next time and um, have it on an easel so we can look at it. I mean, obviously we have, we have them. <coughs> But, um, but to have it in front of us. <laughs> okay. I know I, I personally love spreadsheets, but I'm sure some of you are just cross your eyes after a while with this. Um, <laughs> can any, anybody um, suggest any other ways of analyzing this data? Yeah, than count graphing? all the pluses and then minus all the minuses. Mm -hmm. Okay. It won't give you like real specific, but it could see a trend. Yeah, I could do that. That's easy to do because all I need to do is copy the spreadsheet into a different sheet and do the conditional formatting on it. It's very, it's very simple, so I can do that. I won't do it right now. <laughs> um, anyone else in terms of analysis? Okay. So I will do some graphing, and I'll do some plus minus, just some. Um, cut and dried, and um, incorporate the current zoning and see if there's a good way to analyze that. I'll think about that. Sometimes when I sleep on it, it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, again, you know, just to, to remind ourselves, the purpose of doing this, you know, for instance, we may write hospitals, clinics, really, really high, oh, we may never get one. <laughs> it might not make sense to have in Hopkinton. But the idea is, is that we, we are not necessarily just gonna work within the bounds of what the zoning is right now, but really kind of with a fresh, fresh set of eyes, look at what makes sense as we drive it toward the future. And we may not be able to start from scratch and rezone the whole town, you know, that's not <laughs> realistic. But, um, but in more subtle ways, we can suggest um, ways to change the zoning to make it um, uh, geared toward the higher value items. So that's the idea. Okay? That, no, that's just a, it's a good thing that the fact that lab, laboratory and research centers has a relatively high rating and we have been trying to get biotechnology companies to come in, it like just matches the yes. thought with the... Of course, it could be because of the, the opposite effect, you know, like we're all thinking that it's high value, so we rated it that way. Um, <laughs> but, but hopefully, I, I really do think that, you know, a lot of them, at least for the job skills and fit with the town and everything like that, mm -hmm. it's... It, makes a lot of sense so yeah. so I just want to remind you that uh, when I asked Linda Karsik who did the um, TIF plan for mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lycan 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 mm -hmm. um, when I asked her how could we attract more of that kind of quality um, use um, she said well in a roundabout way she said the the main thing that companies are looking for today is that work, play, and live mixed use, which we really don't have zoning for that. Right. Now, that also enters into do we have residential, you know, be part of this, because this is one of the key issues that we're faced with with citizens' position, petitions. But the point I'm trying to make is that if we continue having the zoning the way it looks like right now. We're not meeting what those companies are looking for. Can you describe the 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 live, work, play? Is it like? Are you suggesting it would be all in one place? Yeah, not just all in one town. They have some new buildings in Boston and in 
We're not trying to be like Boston. No, 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 yes, I know, but, but I'm just, but it just is exactly sort of what to what the saying. point. Um, I saw them when I was there last weekend. Seaport? And yeah, and there too. Yeah. And it's literally like in one, you know, we would never have a giant high rise here, but it's got a gym, it has like a daycare center, it has a restaurant, it has literally everything, so you don't even have to leave the building. Yeah. But in a smaller town like this, because I was talking to one of the professors when I was back down in Miami, um, and she does commercial real estate, and I just wanted her opinion on everything. And she was saying that the bigger companies, if they're looking for smaller towns where they know that you won't have everything in one building, but it's close enough, is one of the biggest things they look for is there some kind of gym or services? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because they want to attract younger people to work there, and younger people want, like, if you live here, you don't want to drive 30 minutes to go to the gym. If you're driving 30 minutes to and from work every day, right. you want to either be able to work out right near your home or right next to your job. Yep. Mm -hmm. So as a suggestion, we might want to look at some section on South Street mm -hmm. because of the potential of the properties there that could be redeveloped and have these three elements as part of it. Mm -hmm. um, or at least, like, you know, like Elise said, in a smaller town, they're not necessarily going to expect everything all in one big building. But if walkable. we have the, if, if we it's have, walkable. Yeah, yeah, if it's walkable, um, or if it's very short drivable, yeah. <laughs> you know. So we do have an apartment complex that's right um, near a shopping center now. You know, it's all all new. <laughs> can't and, walk here though. And potentially, no, you can't. And potentially, we'll have a gym near near there if it ever happens um, <laughs> so yeah there is that's a gem. an example there yeah. is a gem but but what I was going to say is in terms of like figuring this stuff out some of the connections have to be made like the ability to walk under 495 right because I see people try to do it all the time mm -hmm. it's kind of silly but that's if that we made some kind of an effort to direct some of our resources towards connecting these things did, did we not spend some time looking at possibly doing that? Was there not something done years ago in terms of <laughs> making it walkable from this side of 495 to that side of 495? It's been a master plan goal since for a long time. Since but it is tentatively <laughs> in the sidewalk phase two uh, plan that's on the Warrant Community Town Meeting. Okay. There you go. So that's one that piece, one piece. But, but no, seriously, the, the other part is is allowing, again, the restaurant to be in this um, industrial A to serve the people who are working in those buildings and being able to get out of the building and walk to the restaurant or go, do other things like that. I mean, it's just one of those, it's like a zoning change that allows multiple uses, but it's defined. I like that idea. Um, some the other thing she mentioned too, I'm sorry, Mary, I'm interrupting, um, is it she suggests that we have some kind of a promotion to suggest to businesses that Hopkinton is open for business and get feedback from the companies that show up. Yeah. So having a public hearing of that sort. The, is that what you're saying? I'm sorry. Having a public hearing? Not a public yeah, hearing, but a but a gathering, a promotion. Okay, yeah. A good yeah. promotion and get some some feedback from the people who show up to the thing. I mean, it's. I mean, we're, we need to start think, thinking proactively instead of reacting towards a developer who comes in with their plan. Right. Now their plan could be good. I mean, it oh, could yeah. be good, but it's not like we we're proactively identifying the area and the opportunity and showing up. So I, there was a time several months ago that we did just some brainstorming on how to encourage biotechnology uses. Most of the items on this list were essentially how to encourage any, any business usage. Because um, the only one specific to business development um, talked about allowing level three by right um, the um, in industrial A. 
but some of the things that we said at that time and I think that we should um, have on our list to develop more fully and make formal recommendations. Business development staff, staffing or ombudsman, something like that on, um, on the town staff. Uh, town website focus on business. We've talked about that <laughs> numerous times, um, including things like buildings that are available, promotion of business areas, promotion of build buildings suitable for biotech, um, and I mean, probably most of the buildings would require um, upgrades anyhow for a spe for whatever specific biotech usage, but. Some things are more suitable than others. Um, list of the owners or brokers to contact for available properties. The streamlining of permitting. And I believe the chamber is, this is a note that the chamber is working with the town manager on a video brochure. Is that, that's currently happening, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and some of the things I think we even talked about last time were about the website, making sure that there's a business tab right on the front page, mm -hmm. and that would lead to some of the, um, the guides um, uh, that Elaine shared with us. And, um, and as we develop more um, information on the permitting process, to be able to have a very quick, quickly available um, link there you know, on, the, on the front page of the website. Um, there was something else somebody was saying about biotech uses. That was the level. The level of biotech. Mm -hmm. Which level I three, know. it's currently a by special permit. Level three is allowed by special permit, and I think level two and one are by right. So, yeah. Does anyone have any idea what level three means? First, it's level four, level five. Well, I know when we, <laughs> when we decided that one and two was okay, we had somebody explain exactly what that <laughs> meant. And I have. It has, yeah, it has I to do with no the level idea. of biohazard. Um, so I, I don't know the exact definition right now, but it has to do with a little bit biohazard. So I think Matt might be looking it up. Uh, yep, so level one infectious it can uh, facilities appropriate that involves infectious agents that do not ordinarily cause human disease. Level two that can cause human disease but whose potential for transmission is limited. Level three is uh, that may be transmitted by the respiratory route that which can cause serious infection. I think it's just. Mm -hmm. So four and five are not, you know, not the things that we would want, yeah, we I don't, want in it's town. It's not even know. listed in. No. Uh, it's not something we would want in town. It's generally done at universities and hospitals. And big but town. that was what but the person suggested. No, it was three, but I was saying four and five oh, okay. are not something that we would want to do. Well, by three. the definition, I'm not sure three sounds great either. That's the thing. Um, but we do allow it by special permit, but we don't have any criteria of what the special permit would be looking for to allow it. I think that's why it is by special permit, so you can go through the whole thing and exactly what contagious diseases we're going to... Probably, probably more for like informing the public and letting them comment on it than anything else. So and appropriate conditions, place conditions. Yeah. Right. right. I was going to say a, a company that does work with level three, as described, probably wouldn't mind applying for a special permit because yeah. they already have a lot that they have to contain. So mm -hmm. one more thing wouldn't be an issue for them. I don't think so either. I really don't think that that yeah. would encourage you so yeah. much. And you're not talking about like a startup company or something no. that's going to be working with And most like biotech that. companies that we're talking about, mo most of the ones, you know, in this area only deal with level one and two. So and I've, ne like I've never worked at a facility. That federal regulation. That tons. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, but I've never worked at a facility that had level three or Most level of them have to have like decontamination chambers that you have to walk through yeah. to make it, and the air blows on you to make sure anything that's on your 
and you have to wear meshes, and I used to do research in one of them, so I can tell you. There's a lot. It wasn't a hospital, though, so. Mm -hmm. So if we want to encourage a company that is already in Hopkinton to expand in Hopkinton, uh, could it be like a, one of the ways, if they already have a special permit, when they come back again for expansion, do they get like expedited or do they have to go through the whole process again from scratch or do we make it easier for them because they are already in here? It probably depends on what kind of conditions are on the original use, if any. Uh -huh. um, so if it's a use by right, they wouldn't have to come back, but if it's probably if it's a level three, there might be some conditions where they might need to come back okay. for a different different configuration or different location. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do to encourage them to come back? Think, oh, I just, I, I wanted to make, it should be easy for them to come back. If I've already gone through all the hoops in this town, I know how to go through the process. Is there anything we can help them through zoning? If at the beginning uh, you know that something may be done in phases, and um, so you can put the whole thing at once with a phase build out, if they do that, but if, if it's something that they learn later and they need additional space, maybe in a different location, they will to have to do the whole thing. We did that with uh, when EMC built their headquarters mm -hmm. on South Street. Uh, they knew that they were going to have a large, very large facility, but they didn't uh, necessarily want to design it all at once. So the planning board approved an overall. Um, gave an overall approval and then allowed them to come back for approval of each phase administratively so it didn't need another full blown full process. Set of okay. hearings and stuff. So. But I'll they knew it. ahead of time that they were gonna do that. Yes. A lot of companies don't even know it's just yep. it's a free for all. When, when you have a known entity though coming back to go through the special permit process. It's much faster. Yeah, you, you have a history with them. You know whether or not they operate the way you want them to operate. Mm -hmm. And whether or not they're a problem child, and or not a problem, you know, you just you know what you're dealing with. It's not an unknown entity at that time, so I think the process is easier. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not designed to be easier, I think it's easier. And I think the flip side is they know us better. They can anticipate what our different forms are to ask and ask for. That's true. Okay. I would like to ask Elaine to walk through this with us, which is the current permitting process. So your agenda item was to discuss the permitting process. Mm -hmm. So just to provide any information, I just listed the uh, permitting processes that are contained in the zone of violence since you have the zoning advisory committee. I mean, there's lots of permits that get issued throughout the town, but since you're concentrating on zoning, these are the ones that have to do with zoning, like zoning by law. So special permits and variances, both of those processes are set forth in a Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 11. So basically what you see is what you get um, when it comes to special permits and variances. The town um, can add a few things as far as um, distributing applications to other departments, um, and uh, how long people have to review um, the process, but the process is typically the same. There's a public hearing requirement, uh, must be held for a, a special permit within 65 days of submittal, has to be advertised two consecutive weeks, um, the first publication not less than 14 days before the hearing date, abutters are notified in advance, and a decision has to be filed with the town clerk within 90 days from the close of public hearing. So those things are standard for every special permit. It's very similar for variances, except the decision has to be made within 100 days of the date of submittal. Can you tell me what the difference is between a special permit and a variance? So a special permit is a use where, in the zoning bylaw, it says you can do this by special permit. So one needs to apply this special for a special permit, say, for a level three biotechnology facility. So people know that, they apply uh, for the special permit, and they go through that process. A variance is something that people would apply for if they want to do something that's not allowed in the zoning bylaw or something that's different, a setback, it's different. 
um, is less than the Tony Bylaw prescribed. So if somebody wanted to do a level three biotechnology use in the residence A district, they would have to apply for a variance. And the standard for issuing variances is <coughs> the statute, and it's a very high bar, um, having to do with the shape, soils, topography, something that's unique with that, to that property. It's not shared by, by its neighbors. And it has to do with hardship. So it's a very high bar. Special permit is a lower bar. It's something that you would permit with um, maybe a greater level of scrutiny, something you'd want to attach conditions to. But the process they go through for approval is very similar. They vote planning board? No. Yes, so uh, variances are only through the Board of Appeals. Uh, special yeah. permits, uh, the special permit granting authority by statute can be either the planning board, the Board of Appeals, or the Board of Selectmen. We don't have any Board of Selectmen special permits here, but sometimes they do. Elaine, how different is our um, waiting period or decision period on our special permit or variances compared to other towns? It's no different as far as the time a board has, but it may be different as far as how long a board takes. So in some communities, boards may be more often or less often, mm -hmm. um, and processes can really take longer, but they all go by the same step. So 65 process. days and 100 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to clarify that for those people out there. I want to know that. And depending on how complex an application is, it may take sure. longer than something simple. Unless, of course, you had that dedicated permitting process, the 43D expedited permitting. And then you're making a commitment to do it within a certain period of time. Even though the process is the same, mm -hmm. this is doesn't really change, but you're making a commitment to do it within a certain period of time. So that's a, that's a local choice. Yeah. So th when you're making a decision to do it in a certain amount of time, that's the hearing process, basically, that you're? beginning to end. Right. Decision has to be done in 80, 180 days. That's a lot of days. For everything associated with that. Right. Yes. Yeah. A lot of times it's a larger prod property that a town wants to have something specific happen and then they need to bring services to it and it's pretty complicated but do you have any sense how often applications for special permits or variances are successful 10 percent 50 percent no 80%. but i could i could look for hopkinton i couldn't tell right, you right, right, right. but yeah mm -hmm. hopkinton. over a period of time i sense um they're probably mostly successful. That's my sense, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. My sense, too. So my, I'm just trying to understand the 43D a little bit. So to opt in, by, by the time we opt in, we would have identified, we are supposed to have identified a parcel of land that is qualifying for this. And so a little bit of the work is already done. So my concern is, it, it's, it's from what is expected out of the community. Other than the timeline, is there anything else stopping us from trying it at least as an experimental basis? Because it's not like we are committing to continue 43 day every time. It's for one property, we, if we opt in for one property, go through the process, and if it doesn't work, I don't think there's a penalty or anything involved, is there? Well, I think, um, thinking back of 43D, it there's a lot to consider when you're looking at a piece of property. Is it something conducive to that? Does it have maybe wetlands that you need to be concerned about? So you want a, a property that you think is fairly easily permittable mm -hmm. before you even embark on that. Yeah. And then make sure that every permitting entity is on board with it too. So there's some outreach and a lot of discussion and I probably has to, I don't recall, but I'm sure it has to go to a town meeting as well and mm -hmm. have to apply to the state. For approval, so there's a lot to go through, and the permitting part is only a portion of it. But it's a community decision. So the reason why I asked was that uh, the 180 period, 180 day period, uh, I'm assuming is just for the permitting part. The, all this decision, we take our time to do go through this whole process, and if something qualifies, and if we choose to opt in, that's when the 180 days kicks in, right? I think so. Yeah. Well, the 180 days would be when somebody's interested. 
once an application yeah. once an application goes yeah. in but you have to decide as a site ahead yeah. of time yeah I understand that which is could be you know and as I recall that 180 days is all of the permitting entities it's not one and then the other yeah. and the other it's yeah. all, all of them yeah. mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. Do you know what the state considers before they approve? The state has to approve on th it. Thinking back about the materials we received, they have a checklist, as I recall. Mm. And then site plan review on the second page, site plan review, major, minor, and. So site plan review is a local creation. Mm -hmm. It's not in the statute, and it's something that um, Hopkinton can decide its time limits. And and requirements. So uh, Hopkins has decided to separate them into a minor project and a major project. And just um, just to clarify, its uh, site plan review is for commercial projects um, for the most part. The only place where uh, well, residential, the only place for residential is the Osmond projects go through. Um, so at Legacy Farms, they go through site plan review. But elsewhere, have we ever had? We've never had another like residential project that wasn't in an Osmond. Is that? Is that correct? It went through site plan review. No. Interesting. Well, it's, it's only, only non-residential projects that go through site plan review. It's a blanket like surprise. Okay. So, so this is a creation of the town. Yep. It's an administrative process. And um, the assumption is, and this comes from court cases, is that a site plan will be approved unless um, I have to look it up in the bylaw, but the path is to approval and not necessarily denial. Okay. Because it's an administrative process. Okay. But this so is. That's formed by court cases over the years. And I this is um, piggybacked on the variant special permit process through the committees, right? It, it so. mimics it as far as the major project. Yeah. Uh, the decision was made to generally follow the same process because people are familiar with that and it's mm -hmm. easy to. Okay. Lane, can I ask a question on the purpose of site plan review in the, in the language? It said, uh, building design consideration should be given to the architectural style and its relation to the re prevailing character and scale of building in the neighborhood. I've looked through all the defini definitions in our zoning bylaws. I've yet to see a de what is How do we define neighborhood for the purpose of site plan review or, or zoning? I mean, it's not quantified as far as distance, uh, so it's something that each board considers. So it's arbitrary and... Well, it's not arbitrary, it's... Subjective. It's subjective, right? Subjective. So it's not... So it's site specific. It, it could be very small, it could be very... It could be. So it, somebody could make a case that the entire town of Hoppington is the, is the neighborhood. I don't know that that would prevail, but that's... But there is no definition. No, there is not. I would guess that precedent is also a part of that yes. definition right. of understanding. A neighborhood it implies a smaller subset than the entire community. It's a negotiation, that site plan review thing. You know, we'd like you to do this, we wouldn't like to do that. Well, maybe you could do this. It's, it's very subjective, in my opinion. Do we have a flow chart of our own committees that, and what order they're supposed to go through? Committees, conservation committee, um, design review board, uh, things like that? We have a couple that I did attach to the, the paper copy. And no, those are the state ones, right? Right, and the conservation commission has one as well from the same booklet, the same 43D. Again, okay. it's a Massachusetts one. Right, right it's right. the same. So every, City and town is the same when it comes to special permits variances and conservation commission timeline. It's the statutory process. Okay, but the order in which you go through the committees? The order sometimes depends on the site and the applicant. Um, we encourage generally people to file concurrently with boards, but sometimes <coughs> applicants might not want to do that if they think perhaps conservation might be a little more difficult. Um, and they might need to redesign their plan for some other permit, depending on what they go through at, at CONCOM. So sometimes an applicant will want to put one before the other, but we do encourage people to file concurrently if they can. 
I have a question of clarification. Was Maspinock Woods a site plan review? No. Well, it's a garden apartment project. So first okay. there's a special permit process, and then there's a garden apartment site plan, which is a different site plan. So that's the one after this. Okay. It says garden apartment site plan. I, I know it was originally approved before I was on the boards back in the day, and then it came back. So I just I wasn't clear, what, you know. All I know is we, we did look at the design of the units. Um, it was number five on this list, and uh, in that case, the planning board sent it to design review for review, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't required. I have another question, I'm sorry. So uh, assuming that, okay, 43D has that 180 day limit, but we just want, we want to bring in a concept of expedited permitting to our, so that it's enticing for businesses to come to a town. For, I'm just going through the points that are part of 43D. Assume we don't do, we don't opt into 43D, but we do as much as possible from the points that are supposed to qualify us for 43D. Like for instance, appoint a single municipal point of contact for streamlined permitting. Do we have something like that or is it difficult, hard to get something like that? We haven't had to do that because we haven't opted into 43D, but for all intents and purposes, it's usually the planner. Okay, okay. So, and then establish a procedure for identifying necessary permits for a project. I have a feeling like the website is being redesigned, so I'm hoping that requirements will be available. So, the only two, like, and establish a procedure for determining completeness of the required submission. That's also there, right? So, we, we have the law, rules or the flowcharts to govern that. So, the only thing that if we opt in, we are putting ourselves under the 180 day limit, but we are anyways doing that. Like a and, I, and I think boards could, you know, um, decide to be quicker mm -hmm. than they are, perhaps, or perhaps be more often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard. I, I, <laughs> just getting volunteers to come do the things we do right now is hard, you know. No, I was trying to get away with like not actually opting into 43D. I, I, but no, no, I know, I can, but it, yeah. what, it, that's what would happen is that, you know, there would be pressure on the boards to, you know, meet more often. Sometimes you just can't get people to do that, even if we were trying to emulate what a 43D is, not do under 43D. Actually, it would be harder if we were trying to emulate 43D in some ways because I, I believe that people, you know, if, if we went through the process of 43D, people on the boards would commit to, yes, we're going to meet, mm -hmm. and we'll do whatever is necessary to do that. Um, however, if we said, oh, we're just going to do this for everything, <laughs> then, then people would be like, what? <laughs> so um, I actually think that to, to a certain extent, it's, um, it's also dictated by the fact that that we don't always have final plans, final applications, or whatever the case may be. There's there's changes, and that kind of restarts clocks in terms of you know how long the approval process is going to take. Sometimes consultants need a lot of time to rework their plans. Yeah. So, um, and and that can be frustrating, certainly for for developers and engineers, and um, but also also planning board members um, <laughs> but it uh, but that it's a reality it's like we can't we can't have um, we can't approve something that isn't a final version of what they want approved so for mm -hmm. instance yeah. but there are things that, oh sorry go ahead. no go ahead the t if the town wanted to expedite things it could say require an applicant to meet with you know a group of people whether it's board members or staff ahead of time to go through the application, make sure everything's complete, um, you know, pre-application meeting. Right now, we, we like it when people want to do that, but we don't require that. Um, so that when they get to that board, they're a little more prepared, more complete application. Um, the consultant review goes more smoothly, um, so the town could encourage more to happen before someone applies. Mm -hmm. so that, that's something that that actually is very similar to what I, your points that you brought up in, in terms of expediting. Mm -hmm. I believe we have those things available to people if they come and say, how do I, how do I get through this process quickly and, and what order should I do it? I think, well, it used to be, Elaine is probably we do that. back yeah. to you in a lot of capacity, but 
that you go and meet with one person and they direct you in terms of what all you should be doing and in what order and, and that service does exist. You just have to ask for it. It's not a requirement. Uh -huh. You just have to say, I'd like to do this. Maybe to, to your point that putting that in the website in the business tab, if you're starting a permit, do these, these this unofficial checklist, go talk to a point of contact or maybe the communication part of it, I don't know. I'm just trying to think what else can we do without actually opting in. Mm -hmm. Well, you could probably address that better than anyone. Mr. Rowan. I'll do that, it's good. Yeah, I agree. In terms of expediting? No, in, in terms of whether or not when people come to the community and they want to do something, is are they aware that that service no, exists? No, typically not. So one of the things that I notice when I'm dealing with commercial developments is sometimes if there's no specific answer in terms of how a development's going to look, they don't want to do full plans, which is part of the review process because it, it's extremely costly. And then having to redo the plans like two, three times, they don't want to do that. So it is a, sort of a give and a take as to how much you can review with how much information in the process you can do it. Um, and I, again, it, it really depends on the applicant and the project, right? And we do encourage people if they want to, mm -hmm. to formally run a plan by the planning board, they can, they can do that. Yeah. So you were starting to talk about the garden apartments and village housing. Can you um, just outline, you know, again, from the from the zoning uh, bylaws, what qualifies as those types of developments and um, what process they have to go through? So uh, the garden apartments and the village housing bylaws allow uh, in most or perhaps all residential districts. Um, the construction of multifamily housing on parcels of a certain size. For garden apartments, it's anywhere from 10 to 30 acres, and for uh, village housing, I believe it's 5 to 20 acres. Um, and uh, the difference is that in village housing, it's 100% affordable, and that's something that the town has on the books. I think the town intended to perhaps use that itself when it constructs some affordable housing at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the process is um, a uh, public hearing is required. Uh, it must be held within 45 days of when it's submitted. Um, it's advertised in the newspaper. Our barters are notified and the decision is filed within 90 days from the date of submission. And that's for a site plan which is a two-step process. So a special permit in these cases has already been issued and a concept plan has already been approved. So at this point, someone knows generally, or the board knows and the applicant knows generally the concept for the development. And this is the detailed design of the engineer that goes through this process. Okay, detailed design. And the first step is the special permit, which was the first process we reviewed. And if a special permit hasn't been granted, it doesn't make it to site plan. So essentially, say you're developing the garden apartment, you go through the site, you go through a special permit process, right? And then you go through the garden apartment design. Um, first, you get a garden apartment special permit. Special and permit. Then you get the garden apartment site plan. Okay. So those are a sequential process. It's not not something that can happen simultaneously. Okay. Process. The, the thought of having the two-step processes, uh, which we have some of those, is that um, it allows the town to approve a concept plan without spending a lot of money on engineering, mm -hmm. so that they'll know that the concept is accept acceptable before they spend additional funds on the detailed design. Okay. And then subdivisions are? Subdivisions are not in the zone of bylaw. But they go through, some. oftentimes they'll go through special permit variances and con -com for some water stuff and stuff like that, right? Occasionally. Um, an open space subdivision uh, requires a special permit as a first step, but that's under that first special permit process. So there are many things that require special permits, and that's one of them. Okay. But the process is the same for everything. Got it. Okay. 
So my, my thought in terms of, again, um, being as transparent as possible um, is to have a flow chart for each type of um, development or um, you, you know residential versus commercial what the process is that you go through what time when it's uh, um, when it's sequential and when it's um, um, simultaneous um, and specifying the the differences um, of Hopkinton versus the state laws because Again, the state laws probably most people are coming in and are familiar with the the process for the for the state laws, and and we can always refer them to the state laws. <laughs> um, but to have a flowchart that's very specific to the Hopkinton piece of it and how it differs, or I mean, it's not it's not really anything that that's you know. Um, in a different order or anything like that. It's just added things on top of. It's administ so it's what happens behind the scenes administratively here once an application comes in. I mean, an applicant drops it off, and then staff here is sending it to other town departments. They're sending it to the engineer for a review. Mm -hmm. They're scheduling the hearing. The applicant doesn't participate. Yeah, but anything the applicant does participate in or that contributes to the amount of time that we need for, you know, site plan review, for instance, if that's but there's a public hearing, so that's the part that the that the applicant does participate in. You know, they participate in the public hearing, and they have to wait for the public hearing to be scheduled appropriately. So, for instance, that those those would be just the differences that we could highlight. Oh, go ahead. Just a question: Are you looking to create this for our own edification or are you looking to create this for the job uh, the business tab on the website yeah I think you know as much as we can be as transparent as possible for for business for the business tab that's okay. that's what I have in mind um, it's of course very useful for, for any for any new uh, new board members coming yeah. in too so <laughs> but yeah <laughs> tell me too <laughs> I have a question okay. when the applicant submits their application and like you said then it goes to the other town um, boards or departments do they know where in the process it is like do they get notifications along the way or are they just kind of in the dark until <laughs> uh, typically at least on the, the planning and zoning <coughs> side when a comment comes in it gets sent to the applicant so they're aware of what the comment is okay or sometimes um, the department it went to wants to talk directly to the applicant and they'll, they'll speak with each other, which we encourage. So it doesn't sound, you know, it, it sounds like it, it works well in, but it's not necessarily super clear to businesses that haven't worked with Hopkinton before. Um, or developers, you know, so it's not something that people can necessarily look on the website and understand everything right away. But once they have worked with our our town, um, the, the 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 system is generally working, you know, smoothly and, and communication, um, you know, is going on well. So um, so that's I think that's that's the piece that we. Um, should focus on is 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 communication up front for people who are brand new to the process and um, and then um, then we can drill down more and see you know where there's pieces that we can streamline in between there no. Go ahead. if I was a new business coming into town I would go to the chamber and what would the chambers direction be Just talk to Elaine Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I, I mean, if I were doing scouting for a business, I would go to a lane. I wouldn't go to a chamber. Because the chamber, to me, doesn't say economic development, even though it is. In our particular case, it is. But that's not what generally, you know, you, you look for one person to answer all your questions. Mm -hmm. And that's why Elaine has so many hats. Yep. Yeah. 
Speaking of which, how is the hiring process? Going? Yes, I was going to ask the question. There is someone who's going to start on April 16th. Wonderful. That's really great. Wow. Congratulations. Awesome. We hope you still, you'll still attend every once in a while, though. <laughs> Top on our list, I'm sure. So with this um, website addition, Ron, is it going to have like a point person to be to you know with their email and phone number so that someone if they drill down to the, wherever they're looking through they can see that when you, you say website the booklet the, the e booklet the e brochure oh yes the, it, that's the the video brochure is going to be more of a promotion piece for the town of Hockington from a commercial standpoint Okay, but it doesn't give you directions. If you want more information, call this person and here's their email. See, that, that's kind of like the, the, the ABCs of the stuff. But that goes back to what Mary was saying earlier, is that, you know, in the, the top headers of right. our web page, there needs to be a business or commercial I'm the one that said tab. it first. <laughs> yeah. I, I said it first. It was like, where is it? Because it, it's missing. Yeah. But there is not a resource person designated that's their full-time job to do that so that's why it's a sort of a, a free-for-all but at this point it, it does default to planning use mm -hmm. and it would it would go over to Elaine's department which which point person just depends on mm -hmm. you know how that tab would be structured but that's Theoretically, is a pretty easy addition to the web page. Right. Mm -hmm. is, but it's what goes underneath that tab that's that's, that's key. Needs yeah. some work. Yeah. We don't want to we don't want to have it put up without anything underneath it. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Good. So. Um, I believe, Elaine, you were going to try to get some statistics on special permits and variances and, and how many. Um, and then um, I can talk to you more about you know, just starting on a um, if it, if additional. I, I actually still need to go through that business guide you sent us, so there might be some good information in there, too. So, If it helps, I can look at some random um, applications to see how long they took to go through a yeah. process. That's that's good too. Can't look at everything, but I can yeah. pick some random. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and then the 43D, some of the ideas on there. Um, again, you know, this this keeps coming up. A point, a single point of contact. If that happens to be the principal planner um, for for a lot of the different issues, um, that's fine too. And and it would be good um, on a website to have. Um, a role rather than a name if we can't quickly and easily change the name if necessary you know so um, so whatever you know you think makes the most sense from that point of view um, well how often do we update the website uh, we have an IT department that will update it as needed okay if, if someone lets them know that something needs to be yeah changed. so okay so we could yeah, sure we could have a name that's good um, I'd like to talk more about a pre-application meeting and who that would be. Um, that would be who, who would be at the meeting and um, that sort of thing. What that would entail when it when it does happen and and whether or not um, that's something that we would recommend adding, even as just an option in a website overview. It might be in the business guide right now. <laughs> I wouldn't know yet. <laughs> um, okay, and, and we were also talking about the um, combination living, working, using play, adding walkability t to town. Um, I know you've raised a number of different times, uh, public transport, you know, so. Electric buses. Electric buses. And, um, and that would potentially include 
um, to the um, the commuter rail stops. <laughs> Sorry, my brain wasn't there. <laughs> could we could we think of something like the village housing as a component with a zone that had the you know laboratories and the restaurants together? I mean, would there be some way to do something like that? If village housing was di di directly for affordable housing, you know, someone built some of those affordable housing units, then they had the ability to have less, I don't know, or more de density uh, due to the fact that they're bringing these other uses together. Does anyone have a comment about that? Because young people need affordable housing. I mean, I, yeah, that's true. It would have been nice if we set aside some of that legacy farmland for commercial development. Well, except for, <laughs> except for the fact that there wasn't sure a demand nice. for it. There I was, guess we didn't think about it. There that wasn't a demand for it. <laughs> it was interesting. No, but uh, closer to 495, if there's you know some sites that could be like redeveloped the way um, we've seen certain proposals before. Well, if you do a if you do a <coughs> play sort of situation, then really, how close does it need to be to four ninety five? Can you not look at the um, the well, insurance property for that sort of purpose if you're going to look at the zoning? That's like a one of parcel. That's a problem. So yeah, but it's a it's a it's a big parcel. It, it, it theoretically it would have the potential to have all aspects you could make it walkable you could make it a little village sort of situation mm -hmm. if you wanted to and what I keep hearing is that that property is not going to be redeveloped under the office park bylaw and I don't know whether that's true or not but if so you want to if I, you want to talk about it yeah something that it, involves all three aspects, then that, in my mind, would be a good place to look and, and consider zoning for that. It's as big as downtown business, just eyeballing the map. It's as big as the Elmwood Park area. I mean, I, I didn't get out my protractor, but just looking at it. Yeah, it's, the, only, it's, the only thing that I heard somebody question was like, because it's, it's buried, it's not near a major road that we would be creating a major traffic area to an area that's not like designed for it. Would you though, if you're if you're designing what you're talking about a self-contained situation, would you be in fact developing a traffic issue? If ideally the employees of the new business lived in those houses, you wouldn't make that much. Right. I mean, everyone has to go somewhere else. You movies you got to go right. other places right. I don't know if you can maybe you can't control that to say these houses are only for the employees of this business no. and you, if you can't control that then there's no guarantee mm -hmm. right that yeah. I look at that property as a perfect school that's what I look at it as you know but it's the businesses have to be closer to where you can do that laboratory use why can't you do that laboratory use there? Because it's hard to attract a company to go in internally. But you know what? You have some idea. If you could get the electric bus program together, <laughs> <laughs> you might have something there, Carol. It's the electric bus program that I think would, would help something as you know remote as that, that parcel. So that's a, see, I, I don't know about that particular land or the about a garden village kind of a thing. The reason I was I was looking at was, what, what are the the younger generation looking for? Say for instance, uh, the bike trail. Something uh, that's yeah. why I was trying to find out what happened to the Upper Charles Trail that's supposed to connect all the thing. I couldn't find information online, but something like that that we already have infrastructure in place which can just be stretched out. And the second thing I thought was. Marat Hopkinton is known for its uh, being the marathon start line, which can be converted into a pull for a museum. But a museum doesn't need too much of traffic. Maybe that is a possible place. The, you know, 
or like something like an equatorium only the, the equatorium in Worcester is some, in the middle of somewhere else but doesn't generate too much traffic it's just kids and it's maintaining the the it's a fun place to go and I, I'm sure it brings a lot of revenue to the place that is but I but we have to have something else like that attractive to bring people in there and if equatorium wants to have another branch why not like yeah. stuff like that so I don't know about will apartments more apartments is not like we have enough choices for apartments and we want to bring other crowds to like we want to have other attractions in our town like right now it's Hopkinton is a school town what else is like stand out for us I'm yeah. trying to see what else can be the standout selling points maybe the bike trail maybe because we have a lot of open area that can be converted into we have a lot of trails or so, we can I'm trying to see what we can sell right yeah I mean, also to be perfectly honest, I don't think Hopkinton is the kind of town that one of those live, play, work spaces would work the way it does in more bigger cities um, or closer to a city. Because p people, if you're the kind of companies that we're trying to attract, are probably going to have higher salaries. So the people who are working there if they can afford to buy a house and they're already in the suburbs, they probably prefer a house to an apartment. That's just my opinion from people my age that I know. I don't know, I'm just dealing with four young men in my house that are all looking for houses, housing and they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things and they've got good jobs and they're, you know, they wanna be nearby and it's just one of those impossibilities right now, connecting the dots. I don't know. It, it's that 24 to 23 to 30 age group that aren't necessarily having kids yet. Yeah. Who haven't risen up the, the ranks of salaries. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. Right. <laughs> that are paying off school loans and then trying to save for down payment. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I, so I don't see it being a vertical project, but I do see some kind of a multi level, you know. Um, thing that would have some connectivity to the grocery store, to restaurants, to, you know, that kind of thing. That's why I think South Street probably is where this this idea, you know, belongs, but may not Either be popular. Sense. It may yeah. not be popular with the town. I just, I, I put it out there. It was what, one of the major things that the companies that Lynn Tokarsik deals with, and she deals with, this is all she does, is attracts companies to towns, is they look for that. I think if, if we wanted to make South Street a more, I don't know, something that people would want to be there, we'd have to redo the landscaping and everything. Like, it, it would be a huge project. Like, the, you know, like you said, it has to be walkable. So you'd have to put in really nice sidewalks, and then you'd have to do a lot of nice landscaping, and you'd probably want to do, you'd want it to be more aesthetically appealing. Because mm -hmm. right now you just drive by, and it's just kind of a street, and there's businesses. I, I would never drive by there and think, oh, I would want to live here someday. You know? You would have to change the whole look of... That's what happens with developers. They do all that in order to attract all the different uh, profit areas in a project. But I mean, certainly, it's it's a possibility if you got the right property. I mean, if you're on the Milford line, you're not really walkable to Price Chopper. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, right now, uh, yeah, we are going to every other town except Hopkinton for stuff like a gym or the swim and tennis <laughs> club. Everything we are going out of town. Maybe yeah. we should come into the town and but yeah. Do we know what is it going to be done or Hopkinton Swim and Tennis Club or do you do you guys know if anything happened with it? It's supposed Nobody to open knows. this year. He knows. Because <laughs> every time I see somebody post it and all the residents get excited about it in Facebook, they're like, Oh, is it opening? Is it opening? And I'm like, Yeah, I hope it op it's op it's opening. It's a financing issue. Oh. It's a big project. Maybe like, do you think we can have, I know movie theater would become too much, to, it's, it's a little bit of tra more traffic. Do we have any pot potential for a concert hall or something like that? Like I love HCA, the fact that it also acts as a revenue generating pr place and it at the same time encourages art. Something like that, that can balance both things? Well that would work near where the museum would go. 
The great thing about the placement of HCA is that it is walkable distance for kids after school um, in you know the appropriate grades that they can walk on their own to lessons and things like that. Yeah. Um, whereas on the other side of town, it wouldn't be. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> just my perspective on that piece. Um, and um, and I feel like uh, in terms of affordable housing for young people who are you know no kids yet not necessarily want to buy a house yet downtown you know in order to revitalize the downtown retail district we you know um, I'd like to you know consider that that is an area but it does is not an area that we can expect large companies to come in it's just you know that's 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 not something that we could you know accommodate downtown. Um, but but that's you know that if, if I feel like in some ways you know if we're putting apartment complexes on South Street with um, to attract a, a business there as well, um, then we are siphoning it away from the downtown business district. So. I don't think so. I think yeah. it's different. Okay. Yeah, t entirely different. Looks different. Feels different. Because the the new area that she's describing, it's going to be more of a modern right. entity, whereas downtown still has more of the historic small town kind of feel. Because you have the main street and all the shops are on the sides. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a totally different feeling. So I don't think it would take away. I think it would just be a different option. What's going on with the Chuck Joseph's thing? Anything? I don't know. Which thing is Chuck Joseph's thing? The thing that behind, you know, behind the, the mansions over the there. Thing. You know. Oh, oh over, there. There. <laughs> over there. The thing that got what? permitted. From what I read about it six years ago, in in basically the same. Idea. I mean, I know it's a different project. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know. Yeah. A mixed. Yes. Mixed use residential. It's supposed to be basically the same project as was proposed six years ago, right? No. Yeah, different. It's like it's different. Diff it's all. It's all condos now. It's all condos now. No. The businesses at the front. No business. Just residential. Oh. <laughs> When everybody's talking about affordable housing, are those for rent or to buy or both or either? Either. Okay. Is, is, I'm, I think I know the answer, but I'm still asking: Is there a spot for, good for a uh, movie theater because Regal Westboro closed, and we, a lot of people are struggling that inside because we don't have any options for movies close by? I don't think so, but. I think they're closing because people aren't going to the movie theaters anymore. No, I was at, at least I was an ardent fan. I don't know why they closed. I highly recommend the drive-in. I heard it was a movie oh, oh, that'd be cool. cool. That'd be nice. There is, no, there is one. Oh, where is it? Where? In Mendon. Medway. Mendon, yeah. Mendon. Oh, I've been to that one. Yes. We don't have. That's my thing. Everything we are going out. Like we don't. People don't. People are, what pulls people into Hopkinton to come in and give us business? Jobs. So that's come the bring only, us yeah. here. Bring people here. Yeah. We have jobs. We've got really good jobs. That's true. That is true. So um, this was one of the things that I did for continuing education for LEAD, and it's uh, showing a community and how it's built with different forms. I, you know, it, this is all generated for communities that want to uh, save energy, basically, net zero communities, things of that, that goal. You know, I know we're a green community, but I don't see a lot of, you know, real focus and zoning on, on any of that. Um, but what they do have is they do have density, but then they have great green space and, and uh, the ability to create um, housing with um, office space and laboratory space or whatever. And, um, because you have all those people there, then there's enough, you know, body and motion for 
uh, a restaurant or for a store or something like that. But this is this is something I, I can just pass it along. You can flip through it. Okay, so Elaine, could we go through kind of our action items? Um, what have you got? Uh, as far as this item or uh, this agenda item? Or oh, no, I mean from the whole meeting. Okay. Action That's items of things we're going to follow up on. Graphs and so on. <laughs> yep. Where, the, where things are located. On this As far as flowcharts highlight communication and what's different in the state law. Perhaps look at random applications to see how long they took. Uh, look at special permits and variances and approval rates. Uh, talk about pre-application meetings some more. Uh, I know I made a note to myself that there are examples uh, of towns, uh, cities and towns that have formal process established that involve that. So I think information on that. Mm -hmm. um, not sure if you want to do more on live, work, play. Okay. I, I think it needs to be discussed. Yeah. I'll add it to the work plan, too. zoning so if you reduce your energy mm -hmm. and your resources on water and stuff like that then you might be able to have more density it's just again it's this these are future uh, types of designs for towns or sections of towns thank you for sharing that is there um, I don't know if there's any um, uh, emailable document that I'd have to go find it, but yeah, there is some place because I have pieces of different ones. Um, but again, these were the designs of these communities, if you will, because mm -hmm. they're within a town or a county. They're they're more driven on um, uh, energy. Energy and resources, holding on to resources, water, electricity, that kind of thing, making it more net zero. Mm -hmm. And well, the concept of having housing, you know, more centrally located and, and having open space, so it's not just a bunch of individual houses on big lots, you know, is, is certainly something that we've been trying to encourage with some of the zoning that changes in the last 10 years or so. And, um, so this is this is another um, perhaps a step beyond. <laughs> yeah, I mean it has to do with look at if you're going to you know to construct a, a project like this, then maybe you you get some benefit because you're not taxing the resources of the community. Right. Right. Good point. So that's great. Okay. So next time, um, next time um, we meet, I'd like to. So we have to look at the schedule too. I'm trying to find the agenda. Okay, there we are. So the zoning of the the of the Liberty Mutual site to look more carefully at the wording of the professional office park and see what we have right now. So very nice. <laughs> um, continuing permitting streamlining. So what uh, data we're gathering, um, uh, or I should say Elaine is gathering, <laughs> on the permitting streamlining. And, um, and we'll see about getting some flow charts just, just, um, just drafted, just you know, very, very roughly drafted so we can start 
thinking about some content to provide to the IT group in order for them to put some things underneath um, a business tab. So um, I think I think perhaps um, by providing more information and how exactly how we would like it to see it designed, it's it's much more likely to happen um, than you know than just saying please put a business tab, you know, with some information. So I think that um, that would be very helpful to everyone involved. Um, and then I would like to go through the work plan and just, and revisit even the, even the things that are closed to see whether or not there was something that has since popped up as, yes, we still need to discuss this aspect of it and we didn't really resolve that and, you know, we, we might want to revisit it. So, um, so I'd like to do that as well. So feel free to review the work plan before then if you wish. Um, so that would be good. And in terms of the minutes from March 18th, um, I had one suggested change to the wording um, and, and when we're talking about strip malls as possibility. Um, I, was just, I just changed the wording or suggested to change the wording. What did I say, Elaine? was okay um, was basically do you have it because I can't remember exactly what I said <laughs> no, you said um, instead of the language um, you would say it was noted that there is not an ideal place for additional large retail space in town beyond what we have now yeah. so that's where the strip malls were discussed and um, I just felt like the, the wording that we had in here implied that we wanted strip malls not necessarily you know it's just just a different way to look at it so um so is everyone happy with that rewording okay that's fine okay and i'll consider a motion to approve so move modified second all in favor aye, aye. 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 opposed abstentions and the minutes are approved and let's see here okay our calendar um, we do not have a meeting on the 15th because it's spring break and Patriots Day and all of that the Monday the 8th and Monday the 22nd are planning board meetings. But it is possible that we could meet during, uh, another day during one of those weeks. Um, is the rest of spring break off limits for town meetings? No. No? Okay. Um, is anyone out of town spring break? Um, I'm out of town. Spring out of town. Break. Anyone else? Oops. I'm around as well. So um, Tuesday and Wednesday of, of spring break week, um, the 16th and 17th um, would be workable for me. Are there any other? The design review is the 16th. Okay. So the 17th. Mm -hmm. How does that work for people? It's fine. Okay. So could we meet at 7 on the 17th? Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's great. And we won't be going quite so long between meetings. And then, um, let's see, Know Your Vote is on April 29th. Town meeting <coughs> is on May 6th, 7th and 8th, <laughs> and 9th. <laughs> and then there's planning board on the 13th. So the next regular ZAC meeting would be May 20th on Monday. So I'm suggesting that we try again to meet, let's see, okay, so two weeks. So um, perhaps April 30th or May 1st or May 2nd? April 30th is town call. Okay. May 1st or 2nd? I'm open to that again. Those are fine with me. How about you guys? No, it's fine. Fine. Uh, not on the second. Not on the second. May first. Yeah. Good. May first, seven p.m. That wasn't so hard. Mm 
And hopefully John can do it as well. <laughs> okay. And I think that concludes our meeting for today. Would you like a motion to adjourn? That would be great. Could, could I just get, yes. Just um, in terms of the town website, the zoning advisory committee has not been updated to reflect this current board. Okay. Could you? I think we've sent uh, IT the, the information and just waiting for it to appear. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> just put next year's term up. People. <laughs> for next year's Zoning Advisory Committee on that. Maybe they'll be on by the time they finish their term. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a motion to adjourn. Any second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We are closed. Thank you.